Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to create some Christmas baubles using IOD's bauble mold. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Let's get started. The bauble design of the mold is symmetrical, so we are able to create some double-sided decorations here. So I'm using amazing casting resin and I'm pouring them into the molds. Now, I've already pre-cast each of these baubles. So what I'm doing now is pouring some more for the other side of my decoration and I'm putting in some white string that we're going to be able to hang our baubles from on the tree. And then I'm taking the matching design and I'm pressing it over the top of the wet resin and very carefully pressing down so that the wet resin makes contact with the already set bauble. This is going to allow the two pieces to fuse together and it will give a seamless look. I'm only doing about two or three baubles at a time because amazing casting resin sets pretty quickly and I don't want my resin to go hard before I'm ready. So you can see here that I ran out of resin and I only did part of the mold. Don't panic, let it set and later you'll see I'm able to come back in with more resin and it's like I didn't run out at all. So first of all I'm doing the top bauble up the top and then I am draping the string for the other bauble that you see there after I've got the already set decoration. If I had have tried to have done it the other way around I might have got the string caught in the design above it. Amazing casting resin takes about 10 to 15 minutes to set, so I'm very carefully pulling the mold away from my bauble casting there. And as you can see, I now have a beautiful double-sided decoration. The details in these molds are fantastic. They're really, really beautiful designs. If there's any excess resin on my decoration, I can just pull that off or I can use a craft knife. I used string for my baubles so that they'll be able to hang from the tree, but you could also use a hook attachment or you could hot glue something on afterwards. I just chose to do it this way. I didn't forget about that other decoration. Here I am coming in with some more resin. I haven't removed my partial pour that I did before. It's going to look like I didn't even run out before. So I've poured my resin in, I'm going to put the string down and then I'm going to grab the matching decoration and I'm going to sit it on top. It's very important that you add a little bit of pressure to make sure you've got good contact. I'm going to give all of my ornaments a good base coat of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint and then I'm going to be actually doing a few different examples of how you could decorate these baubles if you want to give it a go. You can see here to the left that I'm using my same cup holder to hang my baubles from while they're drying. This is a very handy tip and if you've seen any of my other bauble decoration videos, you will know that this is a wonderful tool to have. For the first two ornaments that we're working on, I'm going to seal them with Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat before the next step. I'm coming in with Dixie Bell's Gold Shimmer Glaze. I haven't used this before, but it is a very, very pretty glaze. So I'm brushing it on and I'm making sure that I'm getting it into all of those crevices and indents. I mainly want the glaze to sit in those details to bring out those beautiful curves. Once I've painted both sides, I'm using a paper towel to wipe off the excess off the high points. I'm then going to repeat the process with my second ornament. Thank you. 
You guys know I love an antique look, so to finish these off, I'm using grunge glaze over the entire thing and I'm allowing it to sit down into some of the details to get a weathered look. And here's our first lot of ornaments. Our next two ornaments are pretty easy. I'm using Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax over all of the details. This ornament reminds me of those beautiful old pressed tin panels and I love how the gold gilding wax contrasts with the drop cloth. I just think that these are absolutely beautiful. I'm repeating the same process with my next ornament. And what do you think of these ornaments? For the next two decorations, I am using Dixie Belle's Iron Patina Paint. You guys know I love a rusty finish, so I'm doing a base coat of the Iron Patina Paint. It's going to give that lovely orangey sort of a rust look. This is just the first coat, so it is going to look a little bit translucent to start off with. I'm just adding it to the top of the ornament. I'm then going to let it dry, and then I'm going to be coming back in with a, another coat of the Iron Patina Paint, and you can see I'm just pouring out my green activation spray into a container and I'm going to have two separate brushes working here. So I've got the Iron Patina Paint second coat going on now and then while that's still wet shortly I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to dip it into the green activation spray and I'm going to put it over the top of the wet patina paint. You could leave the green patina, uh, patina activation spray in the container but I like to have a bit more control which is why I use a brush. You can see that when I use the patina paint and the activation spray that I tend to use a dabbing or stippling motion. This is so that I can get texture as well as a bit more of a realistic finish. Here I'm repeating the process on my second ornament. I am placing down my base coat of iron patina paint and then once that's dry, I will come in again with another coat of the same paint and then use the green activation spray. When you're using the patina paint range, you want to make sure that you don't get any of the green activation spray into your patina paint container itself. You could accidentally activate the whole container and then that would be a really big waste. The patina will naturally change over time. This will be gradual, but if you like how your patina looks at a specific stage, it is a good idea to seal it with patina guard or a clear coat to halt the changing process. It really is up to you. I personally think it's great that it would subtly change over time. Once I have my activation spray on, I tend to leave my patina paint for at least 24 hours so the product has time to react. The next day, I'm coming in in certain areas with some more of Dixie Belle's drop cloth. When the paint's dry, I'm sealing both of the pieces with Dixie Belle's satin clear coat. I'm then adding Dixie Belle's grunge glaze into the details and wiping it off the high points. 
and here are our rustic ornaments. Our last ornament is a little bit of an experiment. I am using Dixie Belle's copper patina paint first. I'm actually going to do two coats because I found that the white was showing through quite a bit. And then I'm going to repeat that process that we did earlier where I apply another wet coat of patina and use the green activation spray. So I'm adding that third coat of copper patina and then I'm going to grab my separate brush and I'm going to add some of that green spray. Now this particular patina paint gives a bit more of a green patina. So I was always thinking that this was going to be a little bit bright but you will see shortly. So this is what it looks like after 24 hours. You can see it really got very bright green. So I'm coming in with just a little bit more of the copper patina paint to tone it down a little. I know this isn't gonna be for everyone, but you don't know until you try. I really hope that you liked today's video and that it inspired you to try the IOD baubles mold. Let me know what you think of today's projects in the comments. Do you have a favorite? Please hit that like button if you liked today's video and that subscribe button if you'd like to see some more DIYs. You can find the products used on today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.